Okay, we're going to briefly talk about external regulators. Now this one is a little scary because there's a lot of magic in an external regulator. Ultimately, the first thing you need for this thing to work is you need power, right? And the power is going to come generally actually from the back of the alternator, not the battery. That's where it's going to come. And there's good reasons for that. I'm not going to go into why, but there's really good reasons for that. The next thing, that's just powering and that's just having it like turned on. It's like your TV plugged in. Then you need the regulator to actually be turned on. And that happens to the ignition wire, this wire right here, brown. And you'll see light, something on the thing that's going to tell you it's working, it's going on. And that's one step. And the next step is, once this receives power, it's connected to power, it's been told to turn on, and this is how it turns on, then what's going to happen is it's going to output on this wire here, a blue wire, the field voltage. That's actually what drives the alternator. And that's the thing that you actually want to measure. Like, is my alternator being told to work? Full field means whatever the battery voltage is, 12 volts, you see 12 volts on that wire. As the battery gets fuller and fuller, it starts throttling down. You might have problems with your temperature sensors. So what I've done sometimes is I'll actually pull away the temperature sensors because if there's dead shorts on those, they might think the battery is actually overheating and they'll stop the alternator from actually outputting. They think the batteries are in one called thermal runaway. I've written articles about this. It's a real thing. That's why laptop batteries catch on fire. Thermal runaway when they're charging. So this device might think that you're in a thermal runaway situation and might not actually stop the alternator from charging via the field voltage. So for troubleshooting sometimes, I'll actually disengage these two wires, the temp sensors. Remember your alternator, if you've got an external alternator, you're gonna probably have the alternator wired directly to the battery, make sure that fuse is on. That's another thing too. And make sure, and this is a really other good one, uh, this volt sense. Make sure that it's still there and it's still working. The volt sense is absolutely essential. And I didn't write it down, but there is a fuse on that. There's absolutely a fuse here. And that fuse probably is blown. If this doesn't sense volts, it's not gonna turn on. It's gonna say, why would I do work? There's nothing to charge. I don't see a voltage. So it's actually looking at voltage and saying, not the power voltage, that's different. It's actually looking on a specific wire saying, what is the voltage there? If it doesn't see a voltage, it's gonna say, well, there's nothing for me to recharge, so I'm not gonna work. And that's how an external regulator works. So I would say first thing, make sure that you have power to the device, you have ignition power to the device when you turn the ignition on, make sure the voltage sense works, and after that, look at what your fuel voltage is, and make sure that your fuse is actually still there on your alternator. I shared my enthusiasm yesterday on how I love these devices. They are magical. If I could only high five or hug the inventor, I would. It is one of my favorite, favorite devices on a boat. It's just, it's a god device. It's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. Is this, sorry. Yeah, just one second, question? Sorry, this is a dumb question. No such thing, and literally. Just dumb people who ask them. No, no uh, such thing. Yeah, it removes an internal regulator on a boat. It sort of converts your alternator to smart three-phase profile, charge profile, right? So it's, it's a way to increase your alternator output dramatically without changing the alternator size. So you bypass the whole starter solenoid post? Well, you would by, well, you don't have to. You would. You'd recommend that you would. You'd rewire the alternate output post to the battery that needs the charge. But that's not the only reason. You're actually... You take your existing alternator off and you have it modified to what's called an external field. It's about a $50, $75 charge at an alternator shop. And then they're saying, you know what, instead of having a dumb internal regulator, you're going to have a smart something else outside and we're going to remove the, external the internal regulator from it and you're going to drive everything through what's called the field voltage, which is this blue wire here. Yes, question? Yeah, oh God, are you including new components in the system? <laughs> I'm loving this. Yeah, what's the question? Yeah, basically how would that work? For, is it exactly the same way as a 
it's pretty much the same thing. Well, what would happen is you'd have an ex you'd have you'd have here in between you'd have this battery isolator, which is the FET. That would be the alternator input, and then the FET output would either go to this battery and another battery over here. You'd want to see the voltage sense wire going to most likely you'd have to be not on the alternator input post because there's no battery voltage there. You'd have to be probably at the house battery still. That's a big, 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 big problem. That's a lot of bigs <coughs> with external regulators that are just MacGyvered in. MacGyver doesn't read. MacGyver's trying to solve the world's problems in an afternoon in 60 minutes. And he doesn't realize that the voltage sense wire, if it's in the wrong place, you will cook your batteries. You have no idea. The world of hurt you're in is going to be so expensive. It's going to be a humbling experience. You're going to want to hug it out. You're going to want to hug it out. If that voltage sense wire is not in the right location, you could cook your batteries and bring them to absolute, com complete death. There is no saving them after that. So voltage sense, follow the instructions. If you follow the instructions, no problem. If you don't follow the instructions, and you value money or your time, you're going to want to have an emotional talk to talk with someone, tell you that life gets better. Because it can be very expensive. Voltage senses everything. Remember, this thing is actually figuring out if it needs to charge or not. If it's not seeing voltage, or the voltage is not increasing when it thinks it's seeing a voltage, but it's on the wrong battery, it's going to say, I see 12. I don't see a voltage increase. Work harder. I don't see anything. Work harder. And you can see a battery voltage go to the other batteries seeing the alternator. But these two wires are not in the same place. And this is to the starter battery, and this is the alternator. This battery is going to go 18, 17 volts. And by the way, a battery can never go to 17 volts. Never. Black and white. It's a life event. It will never recuperate. There's no amount of cuddling or anything you can do to that battery. That battery is done. It's toast. It's going to the graveyard. So you absolutely need to have that voltage sense wire at the same battery where the alternator is connected. If you don't, you're in a world of hurt. And you won't be troubleshooting the problem at this point. It's catastrophic. Like, there is no troubleshooting. You're calling someone in. Is it to the same battery or to the same battery bank? Well, you want to have the same battery bank or battery is the same thing. Because a battery bank could, I use the word interchangeably. What's the difference between a battery bank and a battery? To me, there isn't one. A battery is could be one battery in a battery bank, or there could be multiple batteries in a bank. But to me, they're one and the same. <clears throat> battery bank can definitely be made of multiple batteries. Questions on external regulators? That uh, voltage sense, if you put it on the first battery of your parallel series, or the middle, or the end? The yeah. Battery? No, I, and I always, I always, good question. I always use it to where the alternator is connected. So wherever that alternator wire is connected to, I'll have the voltage sense connected to the same place. And remember, I did not showing for simplicity, I'm not showing what is called the positive unswitched distribution post, which I love to use all the time. But generally, that wire and that wire are going to be on the positive unswitched distribution post. Yeah. Because you can't bring all these things to a battery, right? The reality is your battery is not a connection point for everything. The manufacturer of your battery gave you a positive post and a terminal and negative post. Those are supposed to go to distribution posts. And then from there, they're supposed to go to everything. Remember, like, I am always thinking about, it's amazing how, when they were thinking about those names, they are talking about in electricity branch circuits. Oh, a tree. Trunk lines, a tree, right? They're thinking about one thing connected to the earth, the large lines are trunk lines. Then you get branch circuits as it fans out. A tree analogy is very good. How many trees do you know that are actually multiple trunks sitting in the ground? Generally, it's one trunk, right? And then it fans out, generally, right? And that's how it should be. So normally, you would have your fuse within seven inches and then goes to the um, uninterrupted post. Correct. What I call an unswitched distribution. That's right. And I'll show you, I mean, I can, we'll, we'll go back and I'll bring it up. At the end, I'm showing overall, the diagram of all, we'll show you that again, yeah. Okay. It's great, but thread lightly, right? If you're going to install that on your boat, tread lightly, tread lightly.